Hello friends, this is Shubham and today I am going to talk about acute cholecystitis. Throughout this video, what I will discuss, that first I have to talk about the definition of uh, acute cholecystitis, what is actually this term means and we will talk about the etiology, what will be the causes of this condition, acute cholecystitis. I will talk about the clinical manifestations, about signs and symptoms of these kind of patients and uh, about the physical examination that how we can confirm the diagnosis of such patients and then we will talk about some lab investigations that how some lab data can uh, remind you about the acute cholecystitis about diagnosis and then we will end this video with the complications and about the treatment of this patient so let's start with the definition actually the acute cholecystitis as the term defines that it is the inflammation of the gallbladder due to the obstruction by the gallstones in the cystic duct. Now here I have drawn the diagram of the biliary tree. You can look over here that so this here it will be the liver from what here it will be the liver and from the liver the ducts are coming for example left and right hepatic ducts are coming and they are forming the common hepatic duct. So this is the common hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct will join the cystic duct which is coming from the gallbladder. So gallbladder is connected with the common hepatic duct with the help of the cystic duct. And this cystic duct with the common hepatic duct forms the common bile duct. Now this common bile duct will go through, go through the ground and it will form with the pancreatic duct. It will join the pancreatic duct and ends into the duodenum through the sphincter of body. Now, actually, our gallbladder is the place where the bile is stored, where the excessive bile is stored. Actually, actually, the liver, our liver makes the bile, and uh, our bile function is to to actually the digestion of the food. So. Our liver actually produces the bile and the excessive bile is stored in the liver, is, sorry, in the gallbladder. So excessive bile will come through the uh, common hepatic duct and it will go through the cystic duct and stored in the gallbladder. Now, actually what happens that when we eat the food, our <coughs> cholecystokinin, uh, which is the hormone, <coughs> is released into our body and it will initiate the contraction of the gallbladder for the releasing of the bile. So as the cholecystin or as the cholecystokinin will come, it will stimulate the contraction of the gallbladder and it will contract and it will release the bile into the biliary tree. However, in the patient with the acute cholecystitis, what is the problem over there? There could be the stone. There could be a stone in the gallbladder which can obstruct the cystic duct. Actually, <coughs> the acute cholecystitis is the complication of cholelithiasis. Now, what is cholelithiasis? Cholelithiasis is simply the stones in the gallbladder. So, <coughs> if there, there are the stones in the gallbladder, so while contracting the <clears throat> gallbladder under the influence of cholecystokinin while contracting the gallbladder if there will be the stones in the gallbladder so it can obstruct the cystic duct what it will cause so the bile will not able to come into the biliary tree in the common bile duct so actually if the stone is present over here And it is moving here, oh, here and there in the gallbladder, for example. Okay, so this condition, this condition is called the biliary colic. This condition is called the biliary colic. Now, in these types of situations, the patient feels pain very often. For example, if he don't eat anything, so he won't feel the pain. 
However, if he, if he eats something, so the cholecystokinin will release into his body and under the influence of cholecystokinin, the gallbladder will contract. And if the gallbladder will contract, this stone can obstruct over here. So as this stone will obstruct the cystic duct, he will start feel, feeling pain. However, in the condition of, this was the biliary colic that if the stone is in the gallbladder, under the influence of cholecystokinin, it can obstruct the cystic duct and the patient will start feeling pain. But in the situation of the acute cholecystitis, in the situation of acute cholecystitis, what will happen? Acute cholecystitis. In the situation of acute cholecystitis, the stones is already obstructing the cystic duct. So the patient will feel pain all the time. So through this situation, you can diagnose the patient that whether he is suffering from biliary colic or he is having acute cholecystitis. If the patient is feeling pain all the time, that might be there is the obstruction of the cystic duct by the gallstones stones uh, over here. And if the patient is feeling pain, specifically at the time of eating or after eating, so these patients might have the biliary colic because under the influence of the cholecystokinin, they can uh, block the cystic duct in that case. Now, if this gallstone somehow come into the common bile duct, for example, it comes into the common bile duct and blocks over here. Okay, it blocks over here. This condition, we call it as cholangitis. Cholangitis. So it, it will block the this is the inflammation over here. Of course, it will uh, cause the inflammation because it, it is obstructing the common bile duct and it is very severe condition as compared to the acute cholecystitis or biliary colic. So, <coughs> uh, <coughs> this was about the comparison of three terms, actually the biliary colic, acute cholecystitis and the cholangitis. Now, let's talk about some symptoms of these terms like let's compare these terms with the three manifestations now in the patients with biliary colic they will have they could have the fever they could have might they might have some fever or they have the high temperature usually so they have the high temperature in the biliary colic patients they have the fever okay now in the acute cholecystitis patients they might have fever and they might have increased white blood cell count, that is leukocytosis. In the biliary colic patients, they will have fever, but they won't have leukocytosis or they won't have jaundice. And in the patients with acute cholecystitis, they would have fever as well as they would have white blood cell count, higher white blood cell count, that is leukocytosis. Okay, so they would have fever as well as white blood cell count. Higher white blood cell count. Higher white blood cell count. Now, if you talk about the cholangitis, it is the more severe one. Why? Because it obstructs the common bile duct over here and causes the inflammation. And it will obstruct the passage of the bile. Now, in the patients with cholangitis, they will suffer with a fever they will suffer with a high white 
blood cell count means they would have the leukocytosis due to sepsis, due to infection in the body and as well as they will have, they could have the jaundice also which is not so good for the patient. Now how it can cause the jaundice? Because whatever the bile is coming from the hair or from the liver or from the gallbladder, whatever bile is coming, the gallstone is obstructing the common bile duct. So it will, the bile will not be able to go over here. The bile will not be able to go through this passage. Okay, so it will backflow. It, it could backflow into the gallbladder or it could backflow in the liver. For example, here is the liver. For example, here is the liver. So it could backflow into the liver or it could backflow, bile could backflow in the gallbladder. And there it could cause the obstructive jaundice. There it could cause the obstructive jaundice. So the cholangitis is the most severe one <coughs> as compared to the biliary colic or acute cholecystitis. In biliary colic we have the fever. So this was, this was about three common terms to which acute cholecystitis can be compared. Now let's talk about the etiology of this acute cholecystitis. That what are the causes, what are the etiological factors for the acute cholecystitis. So let's talk about that. Geology. It can be due to some obstruction in the, for example, uh, in the cystic duct or uh, any problems in the blood vessels. Okay. What else? Also, any kind of gallstones in the gallbladder, any kind of sepsis or infection, or uh, there is the blockage in the bile duct over here, they can cause the acute cholecystitis. So what are these factors? The bile duct blockage, blockage of the bile duct or gallstones or any kind of infection or obstruction in the cystic duct for example. Duct of obstruction. So these are some etiological factors as far as acute cholecystitis is concerned. Now let's talk about some signs and symptoms, some clinical manifestations of such kind of patients. So what will be the history of these kinds of patients? They would have nausea, they would have nausea, they would have vomiting, they have the pain in the over here, right upper quadrant. They have the pain in the right upper quadrant which is radiating to the back side. So they have the nausea, they have the vomiting, they have the right upper quadrant pain. The pain is radiating towards the back side through the right side and they will have the high fever. So these are some clinical manifestations, signs and symptoms of such kinds of patients. Signs and symptoms. That they could have nausea. They could have vomiting. Fever. They have the right upper quadrant pain. The pain is radiating towards back. 
creating pain towards the back side. Creating pain towards back, back side. Now let's talk about the examination that how you can actually diagnose such patients. But what are the positive signs? Look, here is one sign which we can test in such patients, that is the Murphy sign. If the Murphy sign is positive, that so the patient is much more probable for having the acute cholecystitis. <coughs> so, how the doctors, how the surgeons test for the Murphy signs? How they test for the Murphy sign? Now, they would place the hand below the inferior part of the liver over here. They will place the hand over the inferior part of the liver and <clears throat> press it towards this side. Press below and ask the patient to inhale. However, as the patient inhale, he will, pain the, he will feel the severe pain if he is having acute cholecystitis. Okay, because his gallbladder is inflamed. Now, if the patient is not having acute cholecystitis in the normal in the normal person or in the normal patients who is not having acute cholecystitis, the patient will not feel while inhaling. So, if the patient is having positive Murphy sign, that means he could have he or she could have acute cholecystitis. So, physical exam, as far as physical exam is concerned, this is the Murphy sign. physical examination. If they would have positive Murphy sign, they might be having acute cholecystitis Murphy sign which is positive. Now let's talk about some lab data, laboratory investigations and that what could we find over there. If there is, we will take the complete blood cell count, full blood cell count and if there is leukocytosis, as I already mentioned over here, if there is leukocytosis, higher or increased amount of white blood cells in the blood. So this is the sign for the acute cholecystitis also. However, this is also the signs of other complications too. But this could be included in the uh, signs of the acute cholecystitis. About the CBC, complete blood cell count. Now, we can go with the CRP, C-reactive protein, okay? Then we can go with the liver function test because if there is jaundice, so that, that could be the sign for the acute cholecystitis because there will be the, uh, in fact, that could be a sign for cholangitis too because it would cause the backflow of the bile into the liver and there it could cause the obstructive jaundice. So we should check for the uh, full blood cell count, complete blood count. We should, uh, and over there we should check for the leukocytosis we should check for the liver function test about C-reactive protein and also the some enzyme test, amylase or lipase test. Amylase or lipase. We could check for these enzymes too. However, they are more particular for the pancreatitis. Over here. I will talk about that in the later section. But for a while, just <clears throat> remember that amylase or lipase can also be used for the test for acute cholecystitis. Now let's talk about the diagnosis, the how these patients could be diagnosed with some methods, some machines to diagnosis. Now, these patients could be diagnosed through the ultrasound of the right upper quadrant because they have the, uh, usually they have the pain in the right upper quadrant because here we have the, uh, in, below the liver we have the gallbladder. So they will feel, feel pain over here. So we will check the ultrasound of this portion. We could go for the CT scan if there is not, uh, not much clear in the ultrasound. And also, very famous, 
for the acute cholecystitis. You can go with the ultrasound. Ultrasound like this deep. You can go with the CT, CT scan for the sign of a pathogen, and also HIDA scan. HIDA scan. What is HIDA scan? Actually, doctors inject the dye, a particular kind of dye. They inject the dye into the liver, and the dye, and they wait for some hours. So actually, the dye would go through down through the left or right hepatic duct into the common hepatic duct and <coughs> will go into the gallbladder through the cystic duct. In the normal, if the patient is normal, he is not having the gallstones in the cystic duct, he is not having the acute cholecystitis. So this dye will come and this will fill up the space over here. For example, dye is injected over here. This will come over here, from here, and it will go inside it. And it will darken the gallbladder. It will highlight the gallbladder on the screen. Okay. However, if the patient is having gallstones in the cystic duct or he is having the acute cholecystitis, what will happen? This dye will not be able to enter the gallbladder. Or very little dye will be uh, able to enter the gallbladder. So the gallbladder will not be highlighted. So that is the positive. That is the positive HIDA scan for such patients. So that would be very helpful. That is very helpful uh, in recognizing the patients who are having cholecystitis or acute cholecystitis. So this was about the diagnosis. Now let's talk about the complications. What complications could have? Actually, there are many complications with the uh, acute cholecystitis patients. This is not so good. So let's talk about that. About the complications. the complications in the acute cholecystitis patients. Now, acute cholecystitis can be converted into the chronic cholecystitis if it is not treated. They can convert into chronic cholecystitis which is a more severe condition as, as compared to the acute one because this would cause much further infection or severe condition in the patient. They could cause empyema because if the gallbladder will be obstructed or cystic duct will be obstructed by the gallstone there will be start appearing the bacteria bacteria will start to grow over there now this, this could cause the empyema so this is also the complication so it's right over here empyema chronic cholecystitis Chronic cholecystitis. Now, it can also cause the pancreatitis. How? That is the gallstones come over here and obstruct the pancreatic duct. Here is the pancreas. I have drawn with the black. Here is the pancreatic duct. So, if it it obstructs the pancreatic duct, what will happen? It will obstruct the passage of the pancreas or pancreatic duct. So it would cause the pancreatitis. So this is also one of the complications. Pancreatitis. Now they could cause fistula. Uh, actually, if you can see, here is the duodenum and here is the gallbladder. Now, if the gallbladder will rupture, if the gallbladder will rupture, the bile will, can come into the directly into the duodenum. So this is the duodenum gallbladder. Duodenum gallbladder fistula. Duodenum, duodenum gallbladder fistula. Also, it can cause perforation. It can rupture over here. It can cause perforation also. It can cause jaundice also, as I've already mentioned over there, that uh, if the, there will be the backflow of the bile 
and it would if it would come into the liver then it could cause the jaundice too now <clears throat> they can cause the mucosal also that is also the complication one of the complication mucosal they can cause perforation they can cause jaundice so there are many complications which are some of them i have mentioned here and there are other complications too these are some major complications as far as acute cholecystitis is concerned so this was about the complications now let's talk about the treatment how these patients could be treated now let's talk about the treatment of such patients actually these patients should not eat anything why i have told you already that if they will eat anything there will be the hormone named cholecystokinin it would <coughs> initiate the contraction of the gallbladder and if in such patients where there is the obstruction of the cystic duct by the gall stone if the gallbladder will contract again and again under the influence of cholecystokinin they will push this gall stone and will try to get rid of it and if the gallbladder will try to get rid of it the patient will feel pain over here right upper quadrant pain so that's why they should not eat anything nil paros npo in the medical term treatment so they should not eat anything npo give them much fruits because they are not eating anything there must be the electrolyte balance in the body so give them ivs ivf intravenous fluids and give them analgesics to relieve the pain of such patients give them antibiotics for the infection for example if there is complications like empyema give them antibiotics antibiotics and at last these patient must have the surgery because as i told you the acute cholecystitis have many 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 complications for example if it ruptures it can cause the pancreatitis it can cause the fistula don't know gallbladder fistula or any other complications so this must be treated through the surgery in the end so these patient must have the surgery whether open or laparoscopic depends on the situation of the patient so this was about the some basic of uh, acute cholecystitis i hope you like this video this was very brief but i think this will be much helpful thanks for watching this video